Good everyone. My name is Graphics. Today we want to analyze this question on mechanical engineering science, which is on resultant force. It says that the resultant of two coplanar force is 17 newton comma 35 degree. If one of the force is 15 newton comma 100 degree, determine the other one. Right, so now what we'll do is this: we are know that we know that the resultant is a, is a single force that can replace two or more forces, right, and still produce the same effect as those force. We also know that the coplanar force is a system of force that act on the same plane. Now we are told that we have two force, and one of the force is the resultant force R. We say R is equals to 70 Newton comma 35 degree right and the other force let's call it to be F1 equals to what um, 50 Newton comma 100 degree but we don't know what F2 is right, but we know that recall we know that our resultant force our resultant is equal to what or we'll just call it our net force right, the net force in this system is equal to what F1 plus what F2 that means therefore my F2 will be equal to will be equals to the arrow minus what f1 equation what one so remember this equation now let's draw our diagram and see how it goes now i have my four cardinal points which is the north is zero degree the east is 90 degree the south is 180 degree, the west is 270 degree, right? And we are told that the resultant force is 17 newton, that means the magnitude of it is 17 newton and the direction of the sense is at 5 degree. So by that 5 degree, we fall somewhere around here. To fall somewhere around here. Right? To fall somewhere around here. And the angle between here and here is what 35 degree and the magnitude is 70 newton all good this is my resultant force now we know that the f1 the other f1 is giving us 50 newton the magnitude and the angle is 100 degree so from 0 to 90 if i add 10 to it i'll be having my 100 so it will fall somewhere around here. Right? So this is my 50 Newton. Right? And the angle here is what? 10 degree. So if that angle is 10 degree, that means the remaining one here will be what? This is 10, right? And this is 55, 55 degree. 55 plus 12 given 90. So this is what we're having, and that is be my force F1. Now the key word here is we are going to resolve these forces because it is inclined, right? So if I'm inclined this force, I will have something like this. I'm going to have this. I have this. I'm going to have this too. Right? So this coming down here will be 50 cos 50 sine 10 degree. Y here will be 50 cos 10 degree because the angle that is inclined to the horizontal. 
also for the vertical aspect for the resultant force if i resolve it here i'll have this to be 70 cos 55 and here will be 70 sine 55 now I'm considering the one inclined to the horizontal. If I 70 um, sine 55 and cos 35 is the same thing, right? So anyone you want to choose, just know when it's inclined to the horizontal. From my previous video, we use the vertical to be sine, the horizontal to be cos. But when it's inclined to the vertical, we use the vertical to be cos, the horizontal to be what sine. Now let's proceed and see how it goes. Now we want to start. We know the resultant force inclined, so we will not write that. Um, resolving the resultant force from here, going upward. So right, resolving, resolving the resultant. Right arrow. Now we have that. My arrow x. Resultant along the x axis will give me 70 cos 55. 70 cos 55. And that will give me 40.15. 40.15 Newton. And my resultant along y will be 70 sine 55. Right? And that will give me. 57.34 newton also my f1 is inclined also so resolving the f1 force resolving the force f1 right so my f my f1 x will be 50 cos 10 50 cos 10 degree and that will give me 49.24 49.24 newton and my f1 y along y axis give me 50 sine 10 and that will give me um 50 sine 10 will be minus 8.682 it is minus because of what the force is facing down right so also we're moving forward recall from equation one recall recall you know very well that my f2 is equals to what arrow minus what f1 right so Along x axis, along x axis, along x axis, my f two x will give me r x minus f one x. So we're taking all the component of x, right? So this will now give me. This will now give me. My arrow x in the equation is giving us 40.15 minus my f1 x is giving us 49.24. So this will now give me minus minus 9.09 .09 newton. That will be what my f2 x, right? Similarly. Along um, y axis, along y axis, along y axis, the same thing to now be my f2y will give me arrow y relation along y axis minus what for company of f1 along y axis. So from here, I'll now have my arrow y which is giving me as 57.34 minus my f1 y which is given as what minus 8.682 so 
to this will now be giving me 57.34 plus okay, minus 10 minus is plus 8.682 and this will be um, 66.022 newton right now since we have f2y f2x we'll be having this we'll be having this come back here right so let's do it here and see how it goes if i want to plot my graph i have my vertical right and my let's do that my vertical and my horizontal axis here right we're just analyzing now we say our f2 so f2y this is y axis and this is x axis so the f2y is given as a um, 66.022 so we start with the x minus 9.09 .09. so going backward right so let's say this point here is minus 9.09 .09 at this point here all right it's going backward now and the y is what 66.02 upward along y so the y is going up positive the world is acts like this so this is our y here right the resultant force will be the one connecting them together so this is f2x and this is what f2y right and our angle here is our angle what theta that's where my f2 force will be so if you want to apply your Pythagoras theorem, you just assume this is our F2 here, which is the resultant F2 here. So we say that applying Pythagoras theorem to this um, angle here, we say that my F2 is equal to what? F2x, my F2 square, the longer side square, equals to F2x square plus what? F2y square. That's Pythagoras theorem here. So we'll now say that my f2 will now give me square root of f2x is giving us minus 9.09 .09 and f2y is giving us this square here is giving us 66.022 all square. So my f2 f2 will now give me um square of minus 9.09 .09 square will give me 82.628 the square root there plus square, the square of 66.022 give me 4358.91 now if you add both of them together my f2 will give me 4441.538 right so from here my f2 will now be the square root of you give me what 66.64 what? newton right that is my f2 that is the second force that we're being asked now we want to know the angle at which the force acts and that will be what since we, are, we have f2y and f2x so we need these two angles to know what this theta is so tan theta is equal to what opposite over what adjacent so my tan theta my tan theta will now give me f2y is the opposite all over f2s is the adjacent so the tan theta will now be 66.022 all over 9.09 .09. and that will give me that will give me um this that will be 7.263 right so my theta will now give me tan inverse 7.263 so that will be 82.16 so my theta is equal to what 82.16 degree right so it means that 82.16 degree will be so it means that this theta here is what 82.16 degree now look at this at the beginning we say this is zero degree 
this is 90 degree this is 180 degree this is what 270 degree so we now see that the angle the ultimate angle here will not be uh theta will not be equal to what 270 plus what 82.16 so my theta will now give me um 300 and what 52.16 degree so that will be the ultimate angle here the angle at which the x2 is inclined to the horizontal right so my answer is the angle so when i say therefore therefore f2 will not be bracket of uh, uh we have 66.64 newton comma 352.16 or one six degree approximately 352 that is my answer so if this video has been helpful to you don't forget to click on the subscribe button and share with friends and family. Thanks very much.